uh, okay after the session could you please share these recordings uh, with the ebom and uh, ravish as well or with me we will provide you the email address okay Prashant? yesterday i had dropped the mail also okay yeah thank you Okay, I hope it's visible to you. Okay, so in TCP, we have the first field, okay, the source port. So we are already aware, like this is the uh, addressing scheme that we use at our transport layer, the source port and destination ports. You guys are already aware what are the ports. Okay, so the source ports, uh, whenever we send the traffic, okay, or initiate the traffic, so in most of the conditions, the source port is a random number. Okay, so the range is from 0 to 65,535. Uh, Why? Because if you see, the header size is 32 bit or 4 by 8. Okay, so it means the complete header, it is not the complete header size, okay? This is the one column size that we have, okay? So that is four byte. Then this is also four byte, this is four byte, this is four byte, this is four byte. So if you will calculate them, then it will be the size of our packet, okay? So okay. this one field, it is two bytes or 16 bits. So if you will calculate it, the maximum uh, would be zero or the range will be zero to 65,035. Uh, okay. Okay, now the next one is sequence number. So, you know, like TCP gives you the guarantee, okay, that I'll transfer your, uh, deliver your packet, whatever you have sent, okay? So for that, we need to, we need a sequencing uh, mechanism so that we can, or the, the um, TCP can track like how many packets I have sent and uh, how many are yet to go. Okay, like yet to go, like it depends on how many traffic that we are forwarding, but how much traffic that we have sent so far. Okay, so that is the sequence number. So the sequence number, uh, like it is like how many bytes we have sent. Okay, so you see it is a 30, Two bit, so very long reach. Okay, so even I do not know like the exact number, but uh, it is thirty-two bit uh, of address. Okay, so the sequence number will be very long. If you will see like sixty-five thousand uh, as uh, the sixteen hundred, but if you will keep on multiplying it, then it will be very long reach. Okay, but it is just to track the the bytes. Okay, how many bytes we have sent so far. Then the uh, next one is acknowledgement number. So whatever bytes that we have sent, okay, on TCP, TCP always acknowledge, okay. Suppose you are you have sent some packet from source to destination, okay. So you are forwarding the packets. So the source is acknowledging you. Like suppose you send, uh, you have uh, ten packets: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and you have sent five packets, okay, from here. Then you sent eight packets here, but so far you have received acknowledgement of five packets. That means that, uh, like what it says to sender that the destination has only received five packets so far, okay? Then there are TCP timers and some other things, okay? We will not put that deep, 
but acknowledgement means it the, the destination your receiver is acknowledging that that much of bytes or traffic i have received or packets i have received so far so after that uh, like once uh, the seven eight nine packets are received on destination then it will send the uh, acknowledgement of eight okay although like these days we we uh, like when tcp you know when they invented that tcp so they were doing uh, you know one to one acknowledgement like first packet received okay acknowledgement of the first and second and third okay but they evolved it by the time okay the, now they do the uh, selective um, uh, acknowledgement okay like you received five packets okay i'll give you one acknowledgement of five it means i have received from one to five okay so this is the acknowledgement so whatever packet or bytes i have received the receiver sends an acknowledgement hey i have received that much of data so far so good okay then the next thing the uh like data offset we will not check this the most important things here are these flags so can you tell me uh like what is sin flag prasad or Ebon? uh we're talking about finish, or, finish the final oh. flag uh sorry sin the first one uh i'm just asking about sin what is sin for sin right yeah sin sin flag Sin flag is the initial uh, three-way handshake. A okay. used to initiate the sequence number. Good. Okay. And about fin? Is it finish, I believe. Yeah, this is finish. Then reset RST. Uh, no. If the connection miss, you have to reset it, something like that. Or is the connection have the error? I believe. Yeah. But yeah. Push. Push is a is to tell that the data can be translated or transmitted immediately. Okay. You push. You push it. Okay. Any difference between push and urgent? Uh, uh, push and push uh, urgent with uh, mean stand for priority. I don't know what time they use it for. Say, for instance, if you want a data to have a priority over any other data, you can use that one. I believe so. It should, uh, for sure, will be used when there is any data problem in the middle and it's an urgent. The main uh, means um, the priority uh, to send to avoid any issues. Okay. And what is this urgent pointer? Urgent pointer. The same thing for fourteen. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what it is and how they are related to each other. Okay, and also it's good like you guys have an idea about these uh, flags. Okay, so let's start with the sin. So as we know, like whenever we, uh, uh, you know, initiate uh, or any protocol or any application is using TCP, so we do the uh, three-way handshake first. Okay, so we have three flags, okay? Like the flag. So first thing to initiate a connection. So this is the source and this is the destination. So we send a sin. Sin flag. Okay. We send a TCP packet and we set the sin bit as in one and all other will be zero. Okay. So when the receiver will receive, it will uh, uh like it will check of oh, this packet uh, is uh, the sin bit is set. That means this is the new connection request that I am receiving. Okay. 
then what it, because the tcp connection that we create it's a both way communication so why we call it handshake suppose uh, like i'm doing handshake with uh, with a bone okay so i'll just you know uh, you know, like, uh, you know, offer my hand, hey, uh, Ebon, how are you? So, until, unless he, you know, like, handshake with me, like, we cannot say, like, it's a handshake. Okay? So, the sender has initiated, you know, offer his hand, like, for the handshake, but until, unless the destination it doesn't offer, okay, that your handshake will not be completed. And also, whenever you are, you know, creating a connection, so the traffic you know the exchange of traffic it can be on both direction okay so we need uh, uh like a uh, both way communication happens. so how it happens so the destination uh, what it will do it will respond back with the same sin bit so this is this not this sin bit okay that we sent that this center sent this is the sin uh, or initiation of uh, that communication from the destination to source Plus, it will send an acknowledgement. So, this acknowledgement is related to this sin. Okay? That sender has sent uh, me a sin and the destination, you know, responded back, back with an acknowledgement. And along with that, it is also sending its own sin. Okay. okay? Then, this sender it will send another packet with acknowledgement. And what is this acknowledgement? This is the acknowledgement of this sin. Okay? That's why we call it three-way handshake. Because in the first packet, it sent a sin. In the second packet, what it did, like it is, it is doing both the work. It is sending its own sin, plus it is acknowledge, acknowledging the, uh, the first packet or the sender's sin. So it's sent until unless you do not acknowledge your uh, your handshake will not be completed. So that uh, this sender is saying, hey, I have received your sin and here is the acknowledgement. Okay. So we send three packets. That's why we call it three-way handshake. Okay. okay. And bare minimum, we need three packets for the handshake. Okay. To exchange our packets. That's why we call it TCP three-way handshake. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, are you? Uh, I believe you are good with this uh, sin and acknowledgement. Okay. Sin is to initiate a connection. Okay. Mm -hmm. Acknowledgement is the acknowledgement of the packet. Okay. That I have received that packet. Okay. Okay. Then the next one, I would say pin. Suppose you want to finish your communication. So your handshake is already completed, okay? And uh, like you started exchanging your data, like sender sent some data and like also received some data and uh, the communication is done from one end. Suppose sender is done with uh, sending the data, but it is still downloading some data from the destination. So mm -hmm. if I'm done with sending the data, what I will do, I will send a pin. Okay. Okay. So this pin means, hey, I'm done with communication. So the 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 uh, the the door or the socket, okay, that is open to send my data. Please close it. Okay. So once the destination will receive, it will send an acknowledgement. Mm. Yes, I have received your pin. Okay, and uh, your uh, you know one uh, side of communication is closed okay the socket that we have opened from source to destination it is now closed but okay it can still keep on sending the data from destination to source okay because their communication is is not terminated yet so okay. once the communication from the destination like destination is done with sending all the data what it will do it will send a pin okay then the source will send an acknowledgement. A, I have received your pin and this is the acknowledgement and we are terminating our session. So you would have heard the four-way handshake in TCP. Have you heard of it? Three-way handshake as well as four-way handshake.
about Prasad. Have you ever heard of? Yes, I have. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So what it is, now you guys would have got an idea. So whenever we initiate a connection, it is three-way handshake because we only need three packets to exchange. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when we are doing the termination, okay, the packet can go up to four packets. Okay. Like uh, the destination sent the pin, then it only sent an acknowledgement. Okay. After that, once it is done, uh, one moment. Okay, let me just use it. Okay, we use it in in you know wrong direction, so it will be this way. Oh, that is different. Hey, sorry guys, I got confused. So this is the first pin that was sent. Okay, this is the acknowledgement of that thing. Okay, two packets, then three packets. The destination sent its own pin. And then it send an acknowledgement. So it can go up to four packets. So the termination can happen up to four uh, packets. Okay, the four way handshake we call it. If someone asks you a question, hey, what do you know? Are you aware of or what is the four way handshake in TCP? So whenever we do the graceful termination uh, in TCP, so we can have uh, the four way handshake. Also, it is not mandatory that you exchange the four packet. Suppose, and so you send a pin, okay, the sender goes to destination and the destination is also done with sending the data. So it can send acknowledgement of that pin plus uh, it can send its own pin as well. Okay, so you are receiving pin and acknowledgement in the same packet. And then it only needs to send an acknowledgement. So within just three packets, your connection can be terminated. Okay? okay. So there can be so many ifs and buts over there. Okay. But you need to understand what the fin flag is to use when we gracefully terminate our session. Okay. So that is to finish. Now, any doubt and send print and acknowledgement so far? No, uh, I believe I, uh, I, I learned this a long time ago. I cannot recall. We used to call something like that, like cheer down. I don't know if that relates to what you just say. When the communication is, is cheer down. Okay, cheer down. Yes. Yeah, the tear down means like you are terminating the session. Okay. Yes. Just like different people are even in, 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 even in some books or uh, on articles, you will see uh, different terms. Okay, yes. so tear down or closing a connection, they, these are synonyms to each other. Yes. Okay, so now send fin and uh, our acknowledgement is done. Then the reset. So reset means whenever you want to terminate the session, you just send a reset and your session will be terminated. You do not need any other packets. Okay. Okay, so like it happens, uh, you know, in some scenarios, suppose uh, your application, uh, you are accessing something, okay, and the destination server got high utilized, okay, and uh, like it has got some another priority connections and uh, your your connection that, that uh, you know, that is there, uh, that is less priority one, okay, and uh, like they want to terminate your session, even without you know, like uh, the, the complete communication, like you are not done with uh, with downloading or uploading the data and uh, they want to terminate your session, they just send a reset bit and your session will be terminated. Okay, so at any moment, if the sessions uh, needs to be terminated by any of the parties or so destination, suppose you, sometimes what we do, uh, we start downloading uh, anything, okay? Suppose we are downloading any movie, and uh, like then you know, like you recall, hey, I have already downloaded that one. Okay, let me cancel it. Then you just click on cancel. Okay, then you can terminate your session at any point of time. Okay, that is reset. That means you are not doing a graceful termination of TCP. Like either of the parties not you know uh, like they are not done with the uh, transmission uh, of the uh, of the traffic. Okay, so. 
in that scenario we can use the reset to terminate the session at any moment okay you do not need any acknowledgement for reset just send the reset your session will be terminated okay got it yes okay so now the only two we are left let's go with the push so uh, as you guys know the the uh, like the default mpu okay that we use for uh, ethernet that is 1500 okay that means the 1500 bytes of uh, traffic we can send at one so it excludes our tcp header and uh, the ip header okay it includes that one okay so like 20 bytes and 20 bytes then our ms okay let, let, let me let me just explain one thing before we just go with this what is mpu and what is mss MTU, MTU is the uh, there's minimum transfer something. Uh, MTU is uh, the volume that uh, the datagram can can send in the internal link. Mm -hmm. And MSS? MSS, I don't know that one. Okay. So yeah, you said uh, MTU is a maximum transmission unit, okay? The data that we can set at one, okay? And we use this term at layer three, okay? So what MTU includes and what is MSS? MSS is maximum segment size at the transport layer, okay? So MTU is, suppose uh, MTU is your IP header, okay? plus your TCP or UDP, like it can be, TC, like we are using TCP, but it can be UDP header, mm -hmm. okay? Because uh, UDP header plus your data, or we can call it MSS. Okay. Okay, so now you understood what is MSS? Like if you, ex if you exclude the IP header plus TCP header size, the remaining part is the maximum segment size. Okay, so suppose this is our transport layer. Okay, this is our data or like IP layer, network layer, and this is our Ethernet the net data link layer. So at transport layer, we have MSS. So MSS is because whenever we send any data okay from any layer it adds its its header and then the data so mm -hmm. suppose at layer 7 you are forwarding an http packet okay so what it will include http header plus data okay okay when the packet come down to our uh, transport layer it will add tcp header yes okay plus your HTTP header plus data will become data for this, okay? And this is the oh. header. Okay. okay. They will become data. Then if it will further go down, so it will add IP header, okay? And uh, the data part of IP header would be TCP header plus uh, like HTTP header plus data. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is how the traffic flows. Like at the top, we have HTTP header and the data, okay, that is requested. When it comes to TCP or network uh, or our transport layer, the head, HTTP header plus data, it becomes the data of uh, the transport layer, okay? Then transport layer adds its own header, okay? Suppose we are using TCP, so it will add TCP, and this will be the data part, okay? When it will go further down, then this complete thing, okay? It will become data of our IP layer, okay? If this is how it works. Okay. okay? So okay. this HTTP or whatever we are receiving from the layer seven, it is our MSS, okay? Maximum segment size. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what is MTU? 
Okay, so at transport layer, we use this term, maximum segment size. Okay, and at network layer, we use MTU. Okay, maximum transmission unit. So what it includes? It includes the IP header. IP header plus PCP header plus our data or MSS, you can call it. Okay. okay. Any doubt, any question about and, and Prasad between MTU no. and MSS? No, no, let's clear it. Okay. On the mark. Okay, so now let's start uh, with the uh, something. Okay, we are going to cover our push flag. So what is push? So, uh, you know, like uh, there is a bus, okay? And it has 20 seats or 15 seats. So the driver, it cannot, you know, uh, move the bus until unless the 15 people sits on each and every seat. Okay. So it will wait at bus stand and people are coming and once all seats are full, then it will take its bus to the destination. Okay. Then it will start its bus. After that, the next bus will come at the stand. Okay. The number of seats are 15. So what it will do? It will wait until unless the all the seats are full. Okay. Then the seats are full, then it will go further than the next bus will. Okay, this is how, you know, in uh, our real world scenario, the things work, like if you would have, you know, I'm not su sure about like the same scenario is in US or not, but in, in in India, we have seen it, like in tempo and bus until and it fills up, like you cannot depart your bus. Okay, so this is the normal scenario. So this is the this is same scenario when it comes to packet transfer, okay? So your maximum segment size, okay, MSS. So suppose uh, its size is 1460, okay, because our MSS, okay, our MTU is 1500 bytes. So what we exclude 20 bytes of uh, IP header plus 20 bytes of TCP header. So if you exclude these 40, that means 1460 will be the MSS. Okay, yeah. Rishi, Rishi, can you can, uh, please uh, start from five minutes back line because I just saw everything due to internet issue. Sorry? I had missed the class for five minutes, last five minutes due to internet issue. Can I repeat that? Okay. Again? Okay, okay. So where we were, like, uh, did I explain this bus scenario? Uh, for starting, from bus scenario starting one also. Okay, okay. Let, let, let me just uh, explain it again. So uh, the normal scenario, uh, Prasad, if you have heard like um, a bus at, at a bus stop, like uh, like we got a bus, okay, and it has 15 number of seats. So until unless all the uh, seats fills up, then the driver will move it towards the destination. Then the next bus will come. It also has 15 seats. So until unless all are fills up, then the uh, bus will depart towards our destination. Okay, so they will wait until unless the all the seats are full, okay, or filled, then they will move the bus. Okay, so this is the normal scenario that we happen to, uh, that happens like in, in real world scenario. But when it comes to the packets, this is it works the same way. Suppose this is our maximum segment size, okay, that is 1416 because if our MTU is 1500, so if, if we want to calculate the MSS, so we need to. Uh, you know, remove the header size of IP and uh, our uh, TCP. Okay, 
So the minimum uh, size for IP and TCP is 20 bytes, 20 bytes. So if we exclude 40 bytes, that means this is our MSS. So what happens, uh, like in the buffer of, of, of the system, uh, like it waits until unless I receive 1460 bytes. Once uh, the 1460 bytes are received, so it will create a packet and it will forward it towards the destination. Then again, the buffers will wait. Okay, the 1460 bytes are received. Okay, it will create a packet and it will forward to the destination. Okay, but in some scenario, what if like you uh, like you will not receive uh, the 1416 bytes? Okay, and uh, like if you will, if your like your buffers will not fill up or it will not you know meet the minimum size of the MSS, your packet will not be forwarded. And what are the scenarios? Suppose you open Facebook. Okay, facebook.com. You entered your username and password. So you have very minimum data. Okay, suppose it is only 500 bytes. And you clicked on login or click on sign in. But you do not have any other data. Okay, but the minimum, okay, the, the rule for this is uh, until unless like it fills up 1416 bytes. Okay, the MSS size uh, uh, bytes, then it will not send the packet. So your packet will, you know, will be waiting in buffer or waiting for more, uh, you know, uh, bytes to come once it is completed 14, 16, then it will forward the packet. So in this scenario, you will never be able to log in into the, uh, like in Facebook, or even suppose you are taking uh, telnet or SSH of any router. We just enter your username and credentials, and the, the you know the they they use is very uh, less bytes, so you will never be able to log in. Okay, so in such scenario, when the application developer they develop the application, okay, they uses you know their pro as per the programming language, if the the function varies, they uses something to push. Okay, push means. It really doesn't matter that uh, the minimum uh, segment size uh, or the maximum segment size uh, traffic or bytes are received or not. As soon as we will see the push flag is set, that means your packet will be delivered to the destination. Got it? Yeah, clear. I bomb to some. Okay. So you, you, you got, so whenever we want to forward any packet at the moment without even filling up or, you know, the, the maximum segment size, the MSS size packet, if you want to send it right away, we set the push flag and the packet will be forwarded just right away. Okay. So this is where we use the push flag. And the best example is when we log into any device, Okay, we only enter the username and password and um, just hit enter or you know click on sign in and we just want to forward that data immediately. So in this scenario, we use push flag. Okay, this is the one. There are some other scenarios as well. Any doubt on push flag? No. Okay, great. Now let's come to the last one that is urgent. Okay, what is urgent? Suppose you have a kind of like a plane, okay, I'm not very good with the drawing, okay? So, so like here you have business class, okay? And here you have economic class. So, uh, like you, what did the, uh, you know, the aviation uh, department, okay, they receive a notification if there are 10 uh, uh, VVIPs are coming, okay? And we want you to arrange the business class for them, okay? And also the front seats in business class. You cannot, you know, let them sit anywhere else, okay? They will be sitting at in, in front, uh, you know, uh, like from, you know, in, in the first, uh, uh, like, I believe five seats. Okay. So, but in the current plane, 
what is happening like uh, the first two seats are already occupied by someone else so and they are not ready to vacate them so what they will do okay the vvip they will be you know you know like okay like they will say uh, you know sir please wait into the waiting room okay we will arrange it into the next flight okay so in the next flight they will book the front seats okay as uh, requested and you will be you know like the the plane can depart from uh, towards the destination so in the urgent data sometimes we have urgent data so we want to although like it is urgent but it is not something to forward immediately okay you are marking it as an urgent but it is not something it can delay okay you do not need immediately but this is something very important a uh, data so how uh, you know the the systems or uh, you know like suppose you are forwarding from one place to another uh, from one system to another so how the destination or receiver will identify hey how much data is urgent okay because you have 1460 bytes of mss and suppose the urgent data is only 1000 bytes okay so it's not that you will uh, you know like one thing what you can do you can set urgent flag and then you can add push flag okay so when the receiver will receive it they will say oh this is urgent and this is push okay so like the destination can consider it as an urgent but the another thing like this is how it doesn't work in real world scenario like how it works is it will always if any data is marked as an urgent or important data so the urgent flag will be set for that one okay and till when the data ends suppose in the packet it will always put at first so suppose you already have a packet okay you already filled up uh, with 400 bytes okay and uh, the urgent uh, data is uh, like 1000 bytes so you can add that data here but no in urgent it doesn't work that way they will keep they keep that data in buffer okay and when this packet will be sent and the next new packet what it will do it will put that data at first position okay and the size of this uh, particular data is 1000 bytes that means where it is ending it is ending from year 0 to 9999 okay and that 999 will be put here in this urgent pointer do you see there is one more field in tcp urgent pointer so where wherever your data ends in the packet it will point that particular pointer so the pointer will be 999 here so when the receiver will receive that packet it will check urgent flag is set that means the data in this particular packet from zero position or the first position we have urgent data and where that data is ending it will check this field urgent pointer okay it is ending at 999 okay so it this is how the destination or receiver identifies the urgent data got it okay okay so the urgent flag and urgent pointer are interrelated so the first okay. condition with the urgent data is it will always be put at the front in the new packet okay and wherever it ends the pointer will be mentioned okay the sender will mention that pointer so when the receiver will receive it will mark this data from 0 to the pointer whatever we have as an urgent and it will treat it accordingly as per you know the the application okay whatever way the application wants to handle it okay got it okay any doubt or any question query at uh, uh, what uh, what moment do we use urgent data do you have any example yeah it depends on applications okay so suppose you have some application okay and uh, they they want to mark some uh, data as in uh, you know urgent okay 
and important data. So it it cannot be urgent. It cannot be might be some something important data. Okay, that the application want to handle. Okay. So they want the you know the the uh, the, the medium to handle this uh, data okay carefully and also inform to the destination hey this part is urgent or very important okay please you know treat it differently so this is the same thing okay suppose uh, someone is uh, you know visiting your place okay and uh, like like if someone or your you know wife's brother is coming okay that is the most important person in the world okay <laughs> so uh, like he's visiting and your wife says hey my brother is coming okay please you know take care of him and give him a special treatment so what you will do you know okay that this person is coming you will give him a special treatment okay but like wow well, your your you know one of friend old friend is coming okay although like he's very good but friends are you know like we we have informal relationship with our friends okay we do not uh, do formality with them so you know your wife's brother is coming okay you have to and you know treat him very well so this is how some applications okay they you know they are designed in all like i'm uh, i do not have any example so you know like where the um, which application uses this okay but this is how the source you know uh, informs to the destination hey this is the urgent part please handle it care might be in that application uh, like that you know to, to handle that type of data okay they have different functions or programs okay so they will uh, receiver will receive it and it will forward that data to the application hey this is the urgent data okay you need to handle it uh, you know the way you are configured for it so this is how they handle the data okay and this is this is just a medium of our tcp to inform okay yes we have a feature we can you know inform to our destination that this is very important data or even uh, sometimes whenever we forward something we mention on our package handle with care okay okay if we have any glass or something you know any like we are forwarding something you know, that needs to be you know uh, handled very carefully otherwise it will break or something so we mention that handle with care on our parcel so the same way you can mention in the packet please handle with care okay this is very important yeah okay? yep I, i got it yep. yeah makes sense yeah prasad any question any doubt Hello, Prasad, you there or you got disconnected? Hello, Prasad. I don't, I believe I'm audible. Hey, Prasad, are you there? Maybe you mute. Okay, okay. Yeah, he's on mute. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so the checksum we already know. Okay, like we just okay. I will not go you how how to calculate the checksum. Okay, so checksum will be calculated. So when uh, the you know receiver will receive the packet. Okay, when the sender sends a packet, it calculates a hash value. Okay, and it just you know use the data and it uh, you know perform a checksum and it put that hash value in this check checksum field. so when the receiver will receive the data it will calculate the checksum okay for the same packet and it matches with it if it is same that means the data or the packet was not altered okay so it is same thing suppose you are sending me how are you okay and you want me to like how you are uh, performing the hashing suppose uh, the hashing result for this will be one suppose 100 and uh, like someone you know took the packet capture okay they altered it okay and uh, once it is altered then your checksum will be changed okay even one letter will change your checksum result will change okay and even suppose your packet got uh, you know some of the part uh, you know it got dropped uh, like during the transmission 
So when the destination will calculate it, the checksum will be different. So okay. this is how the source and destination defines uh, like the packet is altered or not in between, okay? Or some part of the uh, data got truncated or not. Okay? Okay. So this is, suppose you, you are forwarding a parcel, okay? And its weight is one kg and 100 gram, okay? So you forward it to the destination and you call to your friend, hey, uh, the, the size of this, uh, okay, or the weight of this parcel was one kg, 100 gram, okay? Please, you know, check it at the, when you receive it. So someone in between, he, you know, like there are few things, okay? That is, uh, you know, they are in parcels. So someone opened that packet and, you know, moved. suppose you are sending five iPhones, okay? And someone took one iPhone. Okay, and then he just closed the, the parcel again and forwarded it to destination. So the first thing that the, the, your friend will check before opening it, because, you know, suppose your friend has opened it. Okay, and after that, he will call you, hey, I find only four phones in that. Then you will say, hey, I sent five. Okay, might be you are, you know, uh, you know telling me that uh, you only received four and uh, you are hiding one phone from me. Okay. So before he will open that or, you know, open that package, what he will do, he will wait. Okay. And if the weight is equals to one, uh, like with this, that means the packet was not altered in between or someone, you know, nobody still, uh, you know, stole something, anything from this packet. But if it is 900 grams, it means he will call you, hey, the, this, uh, the weight of this parcel is 900 grams. So, like what was the weight when you, uh, you know, when you waited before sending, you will say hey, one point. Then he can say, hey, I'm not opening this. Okay. And this, he can take the photo and he can send you, hey, this is how it is. So might be someone or it was, you know, altered in between someone, you know, uh, like open that packet and install something from this. Okay. So this is the same way the checksum is calculated of the packet and that value is put they put it here. So when the receiver receives the packet, it just check this, it calculates the checksum again, and it compare it with this checksum. If the value is same, that means the packet you have received or the receiver received the packet the way it was sent, okay? There was okay. no truncation. So that is the checksum, okay? So there are some mathematic, uh, mathematical calculation that happens in background, you do not need to worry. So we have systems and uh, like they can do it. Or they do it by this okay okay so okay now the next thing okay how you do this impact okay windowing okay so what is windowing so okay let me just windowing suppose you have a source and here is the destination so the destination can receive uh, 500 mb data at one go okay and the sender can send one gig data at, at once suppose it's buffer size the ram and memory is very high it has 32 gigs of ram it only has your know, 24 gig or uh, suppose 16 gig of RAM. Okay, so the buffers that uh, the receiver has, so it is only 16 gig or like it can only receive 500 MB of data at one go. But the sender can send one gig. So, you know, suppose he's sending uh, like your data and you can only have, you know, like a store 500 of MB data and uh, so, you know, there will be an flow control. Have you heard of flow control in TCP? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, suppose you, you in your house, you can only place, you know, like you have a room, okay? In that room, someone sends you, you know, a bed, okay? So your size, you know, room size is six by, uh, you know, 10 by six, okay? So you receive a, you know, bed and the size of the bed is, um, eight by six, 
Okay, so you can only keep one bed in this room, okay, with this size. Otherwise, you know how much is left? Two by only two fits are left in your room. So you cannot, mm -hmm. you know, fit any uh, the next bed in your room. That's okay? yes, true. Yeah, so the same way, if you if the destination can only receive 500 MB of data at one go, then you cannot, might be your forwarding speed or your buffers or your, you know, transmission speed or the, the capacity of yours is very high, but the receiver cannot hold that much of data at one go. Okay, so in this scenario, our TCP provides the flow controls, okay? So when the TCP handshake happens, it also exchange the window size. Okay, so if you see the window size is 16 uh, bit of fill, so it can be maximum 65,535. Okay, so suppose it what it will do, it will send one gig. Okay, hey, I can send you one gig. Or suppose I can send you 65,555, but I can only handle 30,000. Okay, so the window size that is selected during the TCP handshake is the receiver window okay so how much i can hold so suppose the receiver can only receive 30 uh, 30000 bytes so what it will do in the send the sender uh, like it uh, like the sender will send hey i can uh, support uh, 55535 or the receiver say hey i can only hold 30000 uh, of bytes at one go what it will do, it will send 30,000. So the window that will be agreed will be the lesser one. Okay. And it can happen in this way. The sender can only send this way. Okay. But receiver can hold 65,535. So in this scenario, the minimum window that we have, okay, it will be agreed. Okay. Okay. And also, this window size, it varies. So what it means, the window size means, like how much packet the sender can send without acknowledgement. Okay? So suppose it is 65,500, and this is 30K. So the sender can send 30,000 bytes without receiving any acknowledgement. Okay? So suppose you send 30,000 bytes, okay? And after that, you receive an acknowledgement of 20,000. It means now the 20,000 bytes, uh, like the, the receiver, it only has 10,000 bytes, and now I can send more 20,000, okay? Because the current capacity is 30,000, okay, the maximum. So we receive acknowledgement of uh, 20,000. Along with that, you know, within, uh, within each and every packet, uh, the destination, it sends its window size. Okay. A, a, uh, uh, I'm sending you acknowledgement of 20 bytes. Okay. Now, now I have 20K window. So it means, you, so you receive 20,000. Okay. Then it will, you know, uh, keep on sending the acknowledgement, okay? Because what happens whenever you receive such data? You received it and it will keep on sending to the application. So application, once application received the data, okay, we can remove it from our buffers. Okay? Okay. We have buffers. So we can remove from our buffers. Suppose you are doing any business, okay? So your businesses, you will uh, rent the homes, okay, to the people. So uh, you have a warehouse, and that warehouse can keep, uh, you know, uh, like hundred boxes, okay, hundred box. So what you mean, like you received hundred box, that means your warehouse is full. So you will say to the, you know, the the, the parcel uh, from where you are receiving, hey, I'm already full. Please hold for some time. Uh, I cannot keep, uh, you know, more boxes in my warehouse. Okay, I do not have place. So what you will do, you will ask your delivery guys to, you know, start delivering the boxes, okay, wherever they are supposed to go. So once you send, then suppose they already delivered 50, uh, like 60 boxes. So now you have 60 box place, okay? 
so what you can say is you can call to your uh, you know uh, like uh, your 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 partner or you know your you know the person yeah. who is dispatching the box hey uh, you can send me 60 more okay now i have some you know 60 place vacate uh, at my place at my in my warehouse so they will send 60 more so now it is again 100 but after that suppose they delivered 90 okay so you only have 10 boxes that means you have 90 places available so what you will do you will say you will call him hey please send me 90 more so they will send you 90 more okay okay, okay. so this is how the window size works okay it varies so as soon as uh, like from your buffer the packet will be uh, you know forwarded to the application then the tcp will uh, send you a response hey uh, i have received that much of traffic okay and now my window size now my window size is 15000 it means the now the sender can send it 15000 so it happens you know dynamically it is not that you only agree 30000 and uh, your window will always be 30000 so the same way in your warehouse it depends how much packets you have delivered. So the same thing in the TCP, how much packets that you have forwarded to the application, and then you need to acknowledge it to the source. Hey, now I have that much of uh, buffer uh, available. You can send me that much of data. Understood? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the window size, it varies dynamically. Okay. Okay. And also, like, uh, because as per the TCP, we can, uh, you know, it's a 16 bit of field. So it's 65,535. Okay. The maximum can be. But these days, like, we have high speed internet and even systems are very, uh, you know, like they are very, uh, they work at very high speed. So our, uh, our uh, window, okay, or the buffer size of the destination can be very high. But we cannot. How to make it more than this, okay? Because this is the limitation of our header. So what they have, they have TCP option, okay? The option is the scaling factor. Because here they cannot modify anything in the header, but in the optional field they added scaling factor. So what scaling factor does? Suppose you added two scaling factor. It means two to power two equals to four. So if this value is four, it means I have a window size of this multiplied by four. Okay. And if it is three, the scaling factor is three. That means two to the power three equals to eight. So what is the window size? Whatever size that is there in this field, just multiply it with the eight. Okay. Above, understood the scaling factor? Yes, I got it. Uh, I will see, yeah, yeah. I never, I never understand the option. That's an uh, option, but it makes sense now because they, yeah. they, they always say it's optional, but it makes sense yeah. to me now. Yeah, so this is option. So, you know, uh, because uh, suppose uh, the thing is that you, you build your house, okay, and you have backyard. So, and this is your drawing room, this is your card room, okay? And this is your, you know, washroom and this is your kitchen, okay? But after that, you want to, you know, make one more room. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you can break this room, okay? And you make two small rooms because it is already 10 by uh, 8. So you can only yeah. have one bar. So you cannot break it 5 by 4, 5 by 4, okay? It won't be uh, use, useful for you. So what you will do, either... You will make a room in your backyard, okay? Or you will just add it here, or you will just go build it at first floor. Okay. Okay. So the same way, this is the TCP header, okay? They have already built a house, okay? So they cannot, if they will, because this is the global uh, standard, okay? So many applications, vendor devices, they are using this standard. If you will make change over there, then there will be so many, you know, software changes would be required. Yeah. So what they did, okay, we are keeping our house as it is, okay? You are not making any change. Either you will just build at first floor, okay? 
so they kept this backyard okay the options okay this field is there so if they are you know getting new feature and they want to add it they will get it as here option okay understood yep yep yeah that's it it's very simple okay now the most important part you need to understand in the tcp header is post port destination port and uh, the tcp handshake okay 90% you will be using this 10% the other things like when you are um, uh, doing packet captures or something okay we would be required this okay and the mss okay now you know mss because what is the the part of your data transport layer tcp header plus so this is mss so these are the important thing that you need to just remember for tcp now let's come to the udp udp we do not need to go there okay Okay, this is UDP header. It is nothing. It has nothing. Source port. Okay. And destination port. We have the same thing in TCP. And you, the UDP length. Okay. The, the, the length of this packet. Okay. And also checksum. Checksum is like it was the same way uh, we have it in, uh, in TCP. Okay. In TCP. It has nothing. Yeah. So UDP, it does not give you guarantee to deliver your parcel, okay? So if you want to forward something, okay, and it is not urgent and if it get delivered or not, if you really don't care, then use UDP, okay? Yep. Yep. But UDP is also very important. Why? Because with the real uh, time applications, okay? Suppose audio holes. Okay, we are talking on Zoom. Okay, they are using UDP. Okay, for the audio call or video call. Why? Because suppose I'm saying you, how are you? A bomb. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if it is UDP, suppose this packet got drawn. Okay, then you will receive how you a bomb. Mm -hmm. Okay, that means you will understand. Okay, like uh, the packet got dropped, but it is supposed to drop because if we will be using TCP here, so what TCP does? TCP does the retransmission. So mm -hmm. how TCP will deliver this? How you abom are? Mm -hmm. Okay. So whenever we transmit our audio traffic, suppose we are talking to you know to each other, and suppose one of the uh, uh, like uh, particular portion of uh, of the phone call get dropped, okay. So if it is dropped, that means it is dropped. We can ask you can ask me, hey Rishi, what you were saying? I believe you 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 broke up, okay. And uh, can you repeat it? I can repeat you, okay. That will be the feasible medium, but. What if I'm repeating it and after that you are again getting whatever the lost, uh, whatever packet we lost, okay? When I'm explaining it to you again. That's true. Yeah. So UDP is very important in such scenario. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Sometimes people say UDP is not good because it does not have any, it does not give you guarantee. But yes, sometimes we have some data that really does not require uh, to destine or to deliver, you know, for, for gu guaranteed delivery. So for the uh, for the real world data, we use UDP, okay? Audio, mm -hmm. video calls and these things. And uh, even live streaming, suppose you have cameras at your home and you are, you know, watching them from office. So you do not want if something is dropped and you, you are, you know, your videos are getting disturbed, hey, like packet drop, then they are again forwarding. You want the live stream, if something is dropped, that means let it drop. Yes. Okay? Yeah. So in such scenario, we use UDP. Got it? 
Yep. Oh, my great. <laughs> Copy and then paste it. Okay. This is our IP header. Okay. So, IP header. So, the minimum size of IP header and TCP header is 20 bytes. Okay. You know why 20 bytes? So, I explained you one thing when we started. The size of this is uh, like 0 to 32 bits for 4 bytes. Okay. Okay. So, that 4 bytes means this is the one column 4 bytes. Okay. This, suppose one row is equals to four bytes. Okay. Four bytes. Then this row again, it will be four bytes. Then this row also four bytes. This row also four bytes. And this row also four bytes. And these are the mandatory fields of our TCP uh, header. Okay. And the IP header. So if you will calculate them, four, 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 four equals to 20. Okay. These are the mandatory fields. You cannot skip any field from the header. But options can be skipped. Okay. It's not mandatory that you use options or not. Okay. But okay. it has to be there. So that's why we call what is the minimum size of TCP or IP header 20 bytes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for this minimum will be 8 bytes. Okay for UDP because it has only two rows. So four, four, eight bytes. But then here, four bytes, four bytes, eight, 12, 16, and 20. So your okay. IP address size cannot be less than 20. If it is, then the receiver will receive it and it will drop your packet. Okay? Because it yeah. is not following the internet standard that this minimum size uh, uh, can be 20 bytes and maximum it can go to 60 bytes. So that means 40 mm -hmm. bytes options. Okay. Yep. The 40 bytes options. So if you are using options, that is fine. It will increase if you are not using it. So at least bare minimum will be 20 bytes. All right. Yep. Okay. So let's the first feed, okay, that's the version, okay? So you are using IPv4 or IPv6, okay? So here it mentions in from this part of the packet, you can check it is IPv4 or IPv6 packet. Header length, what is the length of the header? Because here if you see header length, that means mm -hmm. the header length. So what is the minimum? 20, you will see 20 here, but if you are using options, then it will be increased, okay? It can be 30 or 40, whatever it is, okay? Now, these are DS fields, okay? They, we use them for uh, quality of services, okay? Quality of control, yeah. Yeah, yeah quality of service, uh, services and control, like we call it. So, we use them. So, like, it has some, you know, uh, like, uh, like, first two bits are reserved, and now uh, we have six bits. So, first three are priority, okay? So, that's how we, you know, for class, class one, two, one, AF, okay? one, two, and uh, then other classes that we have, okay? We will not go to, to check the quality of services, but these are used for QoS, okay? Then the total length. Total mm -hmm. length means the header length plus In data. Data. Yeah. data. Yeah. So if someone would say you, hey, can you tell me what is the data length in this packet? Can you calculate it? Yep, you just, yeah, you yeah, add. Because uh, you will be having total length. Okay, just header length, you have it here. Remove, yep. mine, just subtract the header length from total length, you will get the data length. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's that easy. Identification. This is um the common thing. Okay, so let, let me, you know, give you an example for this. Suppose you have a PC. Okay, here you have a firewall. Okay, that you are doing that. Okay, for the internet and you are forwarding it to a desktop. So you send a packet, and here you perform NAT. 
one dot one dot one dot one. So if someone asks you, like you took packet capture here, and you took packet capture here, okay, here on this interface, after the net. So how you can identify the packet before net and after net? Because uh, once you will do the source net here, that means your source IP will be changed. So how will you identify what is the, uh, you know, uh, like which packet, uh, you know, uh, will be perform netting, okay? And after netting, what is that packet? If you want to compare the, both the packets. So their source IP can change, okay? But from source to destination, your identification will, will remain same. Mm -hmm. Okay. So even you are doing napping, your identification will not change. Okay. Okay. I got okay. it. And uh, it is uh, also used in, uh, you know, like, uh, so you got it? Like, what is identification? That is unique from source to destination. Okay, now the next thing is flags, okay? So one flag is reserved and these are used for uh, fragmentation, okay? One is for more fragment and one is do not fragment. So if do not fragment is set, that means this packet cannot be fragmented by any layer three device, okay, in between. You cannot fragment this if the this do not fragment uh, bit is set, okay? And if more is set, that means the packet got fragmented, okay? And if it is set to one, that means there are more fragments for this. You know how we use these fragments? Suppose you have a packet, okay? So its size is uh, suppose 35, 3500 bytes, okay? And uh, in one packet, it is going 1500, then 3000, okay, and this. So, like, you, you forwarded this packet, okay, and this needs to be fragmented at uh, layer 3. So, what you did, you added this packet, okay, and also your identification will be same in this. Okay? Okay. Your identification will be same on all these three packets, okay? Those you are fragmenting, okay? Mm -hmm. And also, it will be setting the more bit, okay, one one and here it will be zero when you will receive it destination okay so you will receive the first packet it will check the uh, fragmentation bit oh it is one that means there are more fragment to come so it will keep that packet in buffer it will not forward this to the application so when the second packet will receive okay i received it i will add it here okay from this fragmentation offset value it will check what is the fragmentation bit set it is one that means there is more fragments to come. More fragment coming. Yeah. So then it will receive the third back fragment and it will add it here. Then it will check uh, the fragmentation bit or it is zero. That means I do not have more fragments. Now this packet can be transmitted to the application. Okay. okay. So this is how these flags use on uh, like IP header. We have only two flags. One is do not fragment and one is uh, like more fragments okay. okay ttl this is time to live how long your packet can live on the internet okay and when we use it suppose you know uh, if we do not have it so what is the disadvantage suppose you have internet okay and uh, you do not have the browsing okay destination is not reachable so your packet first okay can they have connectivity okay to each other so your packet will come here, then it will go there, default gateway, then it will take again default gateway, then it will take again default gateway, default gateway, default gateway, default gateway, default gateway. It will keep on traveling over the internet, okay? It will never die, okay? Immortal. Okay. It will become a model packet. So to resolve this problem, they came up with ETL, okay? So the maximum ETL can be 255. So whenever the packet will, you know, uh, deliver or, you know, uh, delivered from one device to another, the TTL will keep on decreasing. So it it will be 255 here, but when it will, uh, you know, this device will send this data, it will decrease it to 54. 
here it will receive then it will be after this 253 then 252 so when it will become zero then your packet will be dropped automatically mm -hmm. okay. so that's why we use ttm to, to resolve that problem yep okay then protocol so what protocol says the above layer protocol so suppose the above layer means the transport layer okay what data it is carrying okay it is telling what data is there so we are we are using suppose tcp so you will see the protocol tcp if it is udp okay. then you will see udp okay okay, okay? And uh, if it is, uh, suppose you are using IP set, then you will see ESP here. Okay. The protocol number, uh, I believe it is 50 or 51. Okay. For uh, TCP, it will use a different the protocol. It tells what data I'm carrying. Okay. So it's something like what you are carrying in your, in your, uh, you know, truck. So it is mentioned over there. Oh, this, this is the uh, you know, product that I'm carrying in this. So this is the same thing that we have, okay? <clears throat> Are you still there? Yeah, I'm there. Uh, I'm oh, there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So. You understood the protocol? It tells yes, I... what I'm carrying. Okay. Yeah. Then the header checksum, it calculates the checksum of the header. Okay. Only the header part. Okay. Only the header part. Okay. Yes. So it, it does not calculate the checksum of data. Why? Because at TCP and UDP, they are already calculating the, yes. uh, uh, the header, you know, data checksum. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. do not need to do it again. Okay. So it That's will true. only do the checksum of header. Okay, so the most important thing in the layer three is the source IP and destination IP, the addressing scheme that we use. Okay, yeah, I, I know, like you are already aware about the source IP and destination, whatever we are sending and the destinations. Yep, okay, you keep, on, you keep on moving hope by hop, hop by hop. Yes. yes, hope by hop. Yes, so now the next is Ethernet. So on Ethernet, just don't confuse yourself, the important fields, source MAC, destination MAC, type, and then your data. What type? It tells what is the next layer uh, protocol I'm using. Suppose it is using IPv4, okay? So in the type, you will see, hey, I am carrying the IPv4 packet in my data. If it is IPv6, then it will say, hey, I'm carrying IPv6 data. If it is carrying the ARC packet, it will tell, hey, I'm carrying the ARC data. Okay, this is the type field of Ethernet. Okay. About? I'm, I am. I'm, I'm. I'm taking a note. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So because uh, I got it now. Nah, I got it for the Ethernet. Yes. Okay. Okay. Ethernet source MAC destination MAC type. What I'm carrying. Okay. What data I'm carrying. Mm -hmm. So if it is IPv4 header. Okay, IPv4, it is IPv6, IPv6, if it is R, then it has different codes for them. Okay, you can search on Google what is the uh, type code for uh, R and other packets. Okay, so this yeah. is what it tells. Okay. okay, yeah, we are done with this. Uh, anything, any question, or if I'm skipping anything, or you want me to explain something so far? No, it's clear. Maybe go through once again. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so this is these are the packets. Okay, we are already done. And uh, now, okay, tomorrow I will be covering uh, IP uh, set and SSL. 
and also how the certificate authority works. You know, like whenever you type https www.google.com. Okay, so let me just okay. this one. Okay, so you see it is uh, showing you secure a lock over there. Okay, that means this connection is secure, but how the how SSL works, okay, how they negotiate the keys, how IPsec negotiate the keys, okay, I will explain you like in the best way. So if you will click here, okay, you can check it or there, just click on that lock, then connection is secure, then the certificate, certificate is valid, just click on it. Here you will see the details, okay. So here you will see the common name, okay? This this site, okay? This site is networklessons.com, okay? Who is the, uh, like, um, who assigned this, okay? So this is Amazon RSA, okay? So the organization, that means this certificate is provided by the Amazon. So we have Verizon, okay? We have DigiCert, okay? These are the certificate authorities that we have. I will explain you tomorrow, okay? I just don't want to overburden you, but just go ahead and, you know, uh, do some research about how IPsec works and how SSL works, okay? So when okay. we will connect tomorrow, you guys might be, you would have already understood it, okay? Might be better than me. And also if I'm explaining you and uh, like we will be having a discussion over there, okay? You will be having doubts because when we prepare something, Okay, that means we know something about it. If someone is telling to us, hey, I have I, I have heard of this, uh, like it works that way. So can you tell me? Then we can have a discussion. You can have doubts when you know something about, uh, you know, any topics or anything. Okay, so okay. I said SSL, we will be working. Okay, I'm giving you a video, okay? That will give you the best uh, mm -hmm. description. So this guy was my trainer when I was in Palo Alto Tech. Uh, yeah, watch this video. Okay. Can you, can you send that in the chat? Yeah, I'm sending it. Yeah, well, you can copy this. Prasad, you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, could you please copy this uh, link? Yeah, definitely. Okay. If you have never, you know, just, just go through it, okay? You will learn how decryption works. You will learn how SSL works, okay? You will know how the certificate authority works. Okay, so this guy like Shakti Man, so he was my trainer when I was in Palo Alto Pack. So, like, he has very good knowledge, and that is. Uh, can, you share the, can, can you share my WhatsApp, please? Yeah, I'll I'll share it. Okay. okay yeah, I'll, I'll share it uh, on the WhatsApp. Uh, okay. Yeah. So before we disconnect, any question from you guys? No. no. So okay. tomorrow. Uh, SSL and IPsec, and I believe we will be done with our basics, okay? And from next week onwards, we will start the Palo Alto. Okay? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, and have a nice day. Thank you. So have a nice day. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.